15 miles. 15 out of 1,400 river miles. This is the heart of the Upper Colorado River Basin, a stretch of river connecting communities between Palisade and Grand Junction. Farms and families have built their lives along here. Recreators find respite in these waters. Fish follow its flows for their survival. These 15 miles are a powerhouse for every living thing up above and down below. But for how long? The Colorado River Basin has been experiencing its lowest period of inflow in more than 100 years over the last two decades. A warming climate clashes with high demands, threatening its future. River stretches like the 15-mile reach will see longer periods of low flow, with segments drying in the late summer to early fall months. This is a startling trend water managers, farmers, and biologists alike are grappling with. How do we find the radical center in the face of new extremes? We have to think about managing the river in ways that have never been done before. The Colorado Water Trust and its partners aim to turn the tide. Colorado Water Trust works with water users across the entire state of Colorado on acquisitions of water rights that we can use to restore stream flow to rivers in need. Our project partners vary, but we work with a lot of agricultural water users, farmers and ranchers. We also work with cities. We work with industry on our acquisition projects so that we can work within the prior appropriation system to find environmental uses of water. The Colorado Water Trust decided to pursue this project on the 15 mile reach because we were presented a really unique opportunity to work with Orchard Mesa Irrigation District and Grand Valley water users on a project to use their hydroelectric facility to deliver water to the 15 mile reach. Here's how the project works. Water secured by the Water Trust, stored upstream in Rudai Reservoir, is delivered to the Grand Valley Power Plant, just above the town of Palisade. These timed releases of water also improve conditions in tributaries like the Frying Pan and Roaring Fork Rivers along its journey. After this water runs through the plant, it returns to the head of the 15-mile reach. From there, the river's increased flows boost water deliveries to farms and keep four endangered fish species underwater, all while generating clean power. This transaction offers flexibility from year to year, putting water in the river when people and fish need it the most. Okan farmers and ranchers, their water rights are 80% of the flows in the river, so they should be able to be part of the solution. Colorado Water Law says water released from reservoirs must be to a beneficial purpose. The environment and fish are not beneficial by their law but they can release it to my hydroelectric plant for production of electricity. Then I can put that water in turn into the 15 mile reach at the very head of it. So it works out for everybody. The Colorado Water Trust wants more water in the river, or Chamesa wants more water in the river. Whether we use it for irrigation or not, the more water in the river, the easier our operations are. If everything's functioning right, everything works better. Aging water infrastructure is a prominent issue throughout the West. It poses public safety issues and is limited in capacity while coming with a hefty price tag to repair. The Grand Valley Power Plant was built in the early 1930s and little work has been done since its construction. As a part of this agreement, the Water Trust is providing funding to rebuild the aging plant, which will generate additional revenue for its operators. It's 90 years old. They don't make any of the parts anymore. Anything that breaks, I have to literally build. To build a new hydroelectric plant is $8.5 million. We don't have that in our bank. With the partnership, everybody pays a little bit and everybody gets the benefit. We also benefit the local communities by boosting flows in the rivers. So for instance, down at the city of Grand Junction, there's more water in the river for them to be able to paddleboard throughout the summer. On a larger scale, we are benefiting water users throughout the upper Colorado basin by making sure that water is getting down through the west slope and benefiting the rest of the water users here. We're not only boosting stream flows right here in the 15 mile reach, but we're establishing a seat at the table for environmental water uses. Water's been used consumptively in Colorado for well over 100 years for purposes like agriculture and municipal purposes. And now we're working within the prior appropriation system to do that for environmental purposes. 
This novel agreement is put into action with assistance from the Upper Colorado Endangered Fish Recovery Program and the Bureau of Reclamation. Through strategic planning, flows in the 15-mile reach are increased during critical periods for spawning and foraging. Supporting environmental stream flows requires navigating complex water laws and finding innovative solutions that work in the long term. The fish don't have water rights, the fish don't have rights, and so for the Upper Colorado River Recovery Program, we're trying to be that voice for the fish to make sure that they also have the right to have water in the stream. A healthy recovery of endangered fish also means a healthy river because in many cases, if there's water in the river, that means the fish are doing well, that means the irrigators are doing well, that means that multiple beneficial uses are having enough water in the river. The same water can be used multiple times for multiple needs. Seemingly, there's two kind of opposing interests at the table, and historically, that have been opposing interests. On one hand, we have water development, and then on the other hand, we have natural resources protection and endangered fish protection. One cannot exist without the other one. As a neutral party, the Colorado Water Trust is able to bring different water users to the table. This has not only diversified who is at the table, but how we think about these difficult problems on the river. One of the biggest problems is keeping enough water in the river. The Colorado Water Trust has brought more water down for us to use also. The partnerships we've made, in my mind, is nothing shy of phenomenal. Trying to find water in the west is that needle in a haystack. And the haystack gets bigger and the needle gets smaller. I think it's definitely be a new way to do business. We're gonna see more changes in water and water law in the next five or 10 years than we've ever seen before. Things are gonna be changing. If we don't help change with it, we'll get behind the game and, and we can't. If we weren't doing it now, the impacts of climate change on the 15 mile reach in the Colorado River would be even more severe, resulting in flows that really drop below the levels that are required to sustain the fish species that live there. We've had great success working with water right acquisitions on a temporary basis and a permanent basis on smaller streams and rivers in Colorado, but we want to take that model and grow it for use on harder working rivers like the Colorado River. In the face of long-term drought and historic wildfires that have impaired surrounding watersheds, the Colorado River will continually need a boost from the Water Trust and its partners to keep it flowing. In the late summer of 2020, over 1,200 acre feet were released into the river, enough to fill around 600 Olympic-sized swimming pools. It's an example of how working together helps keep rivers running and fish healthy. We're entering a new paradigm, one that engages private and public interest alike, and is a catalyst for positive outcomes for agriculture, for the environment, and for the communities that rely on them.